Mojave Desert, a 50,000 mile chunk of hostile, arid terrain with 10,000 foot mountains and temperatures that range from 15 to 134 degrees. Seismically active and prone to earthquakes, it receives on average less than two inches of rain per year, making it one of the harshest climates on the planet. Nestled within her fiery foothills lies Las Vegas, Sin City, the entertainment capital of the world, a city that gave birth to the Rat Pack, the modern mega resort, and one of the most celebrated races in history. 52 years ago, the Las Vegas Mint Hotel held the inaugural Mint 400 Rally, which not only gave rise to modern off-road endurance racing, it went on to draw top race car drivers, celebrities, and international press from all over the world. For over five decades, men and women from every walk of life and every background have met on this desolate and punishing battlefield in one of the longest running and most prestigious motorsports races on the planet. This year, Mint 400 owners Josh and Matt Martelli have attracted over 500 race teams in a record 83 classes to compete on a newly designed Tony Vanillo race course. A 100-mile nightmare of thick silt, crushing stone, jagged cactus, and massive ruts. Less than half of them will finish. The Mint 400 pulls no punches. It is the reigning heavyweight of off-road racing. To win here, your race must be flawless. This is the Great American Off-Road Race. This is the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Racing motorcycles in the desert is one of the most thrilling challenges on the planet. Bikes raced the Mint from 1968 to 1976 and returned to the Mint last year after a 43-year hiatus. This year, the course was improved on, new sections were added, and the Mint teamed up with the National Hare and Hound Association. The moto course featured over 80 miles of rocky, sandy, rutted desert landscape with two remote pits and more than 50 miles of single track racing. There were over 35 classes available to race and each began with a dead engine start. Racers were separated into rows by class. All of the bikes were carefully tracked using sophisticated GPS tracking devices and both NHHA and Mint 400 staff monitored the racing closely. Most of the registered racers would compete for two grueling laps at the race this year, some only one. The challenge for the race organizers was getting all of the motorcycles safely off the course before starting the more than 200 limited cars and trucks right behind them. The Mint 400 bike race featured several new classes this year including the Harley-Davidson-sponsored Hooligan Enduro class, which was a Rung What You Brung street bike crossover class. It was inspired by Hooligan Asphalt Racing and ringleader Mark Atkins, AKA Rusty Butcher. Mark and over 20 teams showed up to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on Harley-Davidson street bikes on the roughest off-road race course in America. Friday, March 6th, 6 a.m. For only the 10th time in history, nearly 200 two-wheeled warriors lined up row by row, ready to face off at the 52nd annual Mint 400. Among the group, some of the top NHHA racers on the planet, the Southwest's most seasoned desert navigators, and a host of both amateur and up-and-coming riders. Some were racing solo, referred to as Iron Manning in the sport. Others were members of teams, tackling chunks of the bone-jarring 80-mile lap. Race director Tony Vanillo gave the go-ahead, and row by row, the bikes executed a dead-engine start and ripped off the start line. 
The Pro, Pro 250, and Pro Women's classes blasted off first, and Dalton Shirey from Acton, California took the whole shot. He was followed closely by David Camo. Cole Knatzer, meanwhile, leapt out front in the 250 class, and Tara Geiger looked strong on her Honda in women's. Up next, it was the 251 class, the veterans, and the team open experts. The pack ripped quickly through the moto infield, going elbow to elbow through the turns. Then, row by row, the rest of the motorcycle classes all tore off the start and headed out towards the desert. The last classes to leave were the all-new Hooligan Enduro and Hooligan Open classes. For these ragtag street bike crossover racers, it was gonna be a long day of racing. In the pro class, Dalton Shirey remained out front ahead of David Camo. Meanwhile, number 17 Jack Simpson and number two Joseph Wasson began battling for third place right off the bat. Jack stayed inside and eventually Joe got around him, but there was plenty of drag racing ahead of them still. Dalton came flying through race mile 11 and looked strong. He had built a small but growing lead among the racers out front. David Camo came through next and second. The 37 year old from Idaho looked very relaxed. Meanwhile, back in sixth, Nevada local Zane Roberts was running strong early on. Shirey and Camo came through one and two near Chokers, but it was a different line than the cars and trucks would run the rest of the weekend. Several minutes later, rider Logan Freeman came through leading the team open expert class. He was neck and neck with Paul Luce, who was out in front in Veteran 30 Plus. While they were technically in different classes, they were still racing hard. Hunter Ray came through behind Freeman in third in Open Expert, with a pack of hungry dust warriors right on his tail. Near race mile eight, Jordan Graham was leading the Team Hooligan Open class on his Ducati Scrambler. He was headed through the open desert towards Hard Rock Mountain. Meanwhile, Rusty Butcher powered through chokers on his modified Harley to round out the race pack. Up ahead, his fellow motorhead Mikey Virus was mobbing down a straightaway. Number 46 Dalton Shirey was through pit A and charging into the Fox Proving Grounds minutes later. 37 David Camo was right on his tail, mere seconds off his bumper. Joseph Wasson and Jack Simpson came flying through next in third and fourth, followed by 851 Zane Roberts, who was now looking for a place to pass from fifth. Dalton Shirey continued his domination of lap one. The young racer was formerly a Rockstar Energy Husqvarna factory racer, but had moved to the Three Brothers SRT Husqvarna privateer squad recently and was showing no signs of slowing down. Behind Dalton, 37-year-old David Camo from Caldwell, Idaho was still very much in the hunt. The two leaders came skipping up and over the Fox Proving Grounds with Lawson, Simpson and Roberts in chase pack formation. Meanwhile, rider Tara Geiger, out of Bend, Oregon, was dominating the pro women's class thus far. Dalton Shirey remained out front and was running hard. David Camo was right outside his dust trail boat and remained in the hunt. Jack Simpson and Joe Wasson remained neck and neck and continued to battle for the third place position. Jack eventually made the pass but it would be a hard position to defend all day. The Mid 400 is much more than just a race. It's an entire week of off-road festivities. This year, for the second time, the motorcycle racers joined their four-wheeled brethren for the 8th annual Republic Services Mint 400 Vehicle Parade. Over $30 million worth of bikes and off-road machinery growled past the huge Las Vegas crowds from Mandalay Bay all the way down to Fremont Street, which was renamed Mint 400 Boulevard for the week. The next day, the spectacular two-day Mint 400 off-road festival saw nearly 300 exhibitors and vendors pack the streets of Fremont East 
for one of the biggest and baddest off-road showcases on the planet. All of the nearly 200 motorcycle racers pushed through the massive lineup as 25,000 race fans filled the streets, all vying for autographs while shopping for off-road products. The goal is just to have as much fun as possible. I don't think any of us care what place we get. I mean, obviously, we all want to win, but at the end of the day, it's surviving the mid-400 on the Harley and having a story to tell for next year. To be a part of the mid-400, like to show people that you can build you can build something in your garage and be a part of the greatest off-road race in the world is like the coolest shit ever. Later that evening, a giant crowd gathered for the ninth annual Amsoil Pit Crew Challenge. Unlimited trucks and the smaller but equally ferocious Baja truck teams went toe-to-toe -to -toe for bragging rights and thousands of dollars in cash and prizes from Amsoil, Method Race Wheels, BF Goodrich Tires, and Pro Eagle Jacks, including a stunning custom-painted Pit Crew Challenge trophy jack for each class winner. Each team had to change two massive BF Goodrich tires and return to their pit box as quickly as possible with no loose lug nuts. Day two of the Mint 400 Off-Road Festival saw an even bigger turnout as the rest of the 500 racers pushed through crowded Fremont Street. In all, some 50,000 people packed the downtown area over two days, making the event one of the largest festivals in Las Vegas. It was yet another record-setting year for the great American off-road race. The new hooligan classes weren't the only big change to the Mint's Moto lineup this year. The Moto kids were invited for the first time in the Mint's history, and they showed up in droves to compete. The Moto Mini Mint 400 gave the Groms their shot at competing on the world's biggest off-road stage. And boy, did they go nuts. There were 45 kids in seven different classes, all vying for their shot at fame and glory. In the big wheel class, Seth Sedora raced out ahead of the pack and finished a full seven minutes ahead of second place. In the mini class, Jet Lessing and David Gilman went toe-to-toe -to -toe for eight laps, but it was Lessing who ended up on top. Caleb Tate dominated Junior Mini, and Malcolm Pearson from Nevada did the same in Micro Mini. Finn Ruby scored big in the Pee Wee 50cc division, and Piper Wells and Sarah Conway got it done in girls and junior girls. Here's a look at all the youth moto race results. Just past Race Mile 26 near Spectator Area 1, Zane Roberts came out of nowhere and passed both Joseph and Jack and flew into third place. The 30-year-old from Minden, Nevada built a small cushion for himself in a matter of minutes and began setting his sights on second place. Up ahead near Spec 2, Dalton was still on the throttle and maintained his lead of the pack. David Camo was still on his tail, but now a mile behind him. Zane Roberts, meanwhile, was starting to reel in Camo a bit and was looking fast. Not far from behind Zane, Cole Knetzer came through leading the Pro 250 class. Taysen Weeks was a few minutes behind Cole in second place. Next to fly by was Kelly Fisher. Kelly was leading the senior 40 and up class. Daniel Barger came through minutes later after Kelly, in second so far. Up in the lead, Dalton Shirey ripped across rockets at race mile 35, full throttle. David Camo was tucked in and right behind him. He was hanging on still, but not gaining on Dalton. Then it was Zane Roberts who was now less than a mile off David's bumper. Minutes later, the three leaders were still rocketing down course one, two, and three. For Shirey and Roberts, it was a familiar position as they raced together in the Hare and Hound series. Camo, meanwhile, has a long list of wins, including being a three-time score Baja class champion. Meanwhile, back at Hard Rock Mountain, all hell was breaking loose. More than 25 bikes in 10 different classes were all mashed together on a sketchy single-track mountain pass. Navigating the mess was Jordan Graham, who was leading the Hooligan Open class, 
while Mikey Virus was out in front of the Hooligan Enduro class. Both were trying hard not to lose their lead. Back up front near the Joshua Tree Highway, Dalton Shirey continued to lead the Pro Open class at an impressive pace. David Camo was doing his best to catch up to the young leader, but the chewed up desert race course wasn't helping. Zane Roberts continued to hold down third place as he raced towards the main pit. Cole Knatzer, meanwhile, was still out front in the Pro 250 class. He was sitting 11th on course overall. Jason Alosi was out front in the Vets 30 and up at race mile 62. He was rubbing elbows with Hunter Ray, who was in second in Team Open Expert behind rider Logan Freeman. With lap one in the bag, race leader Dalton Shirey hit the main pit and grabbed fuel in a matter of seconds. David Camo pulled into his pit and grabbed gas as well, and Zane Roberts was into his pit mere seconds after David pulled over. Dalton and David went bar to bar on the start of lap two. Dalton got the edge and moved out front as Zane Roberts came screaming past next in third still. Minutes later, Dalton shot across warp zone as tucked as possible. He was tracking at over a hundred miles per hour. David Camo was still on his tail. The two had opened up a sizable lead on the chase back. Dalton was floating across the large whoops that would terrorize the cars and trucks later that afternoon and weekend. And Jordan Graham was still out front in Team Hooligan Open on his Fast House Scrambler Ducati. You'd have to be crazy to want to race a street bike in the desert. Well, Rusty Butcher and his band of hooligan misfits just so happened to be completely nuts. The idea for creating the hooligan class came to Mark after competing in the Mint in 2019 and talking with the Mint owners. It took months of fabrication and practice, though, to get the boys to Vegas in race-ready shape. This whole Harley thing for me in the past seven years has been a weird thing. Cause me, I just think I'm some dummy. And all I'm doing is being me and just trying to have fun. But I'm also documenting me having fun. So it's turned into like me being the front man to a lot of like fun, stupid trends. And like, I, I remember I had the moment, I had my buddy, I'm like, take my photo on the line this year at the Mint. I said, take my photo, I'm standing there and there's like a line of Harleys behind me of dudes who just believed in what I said and showed up to race this race and it was like a, the coolest feeling ever. And like, honestly, I don't really give a shit if I win or not. My goal to win the Mint 400 was to have people show up. And that was my goal to show the Mint and Harley that like I can make this thing take off, you know? And it means a lot to me that people are paying attention to what I do and they believe what I say because all I'm trying to do is show people that they can have fun on a Harley doing stupid things. And it's really cheap to get into, and it's the most biggest ass kicking you'll ever get, and you'll be so stoked that you did it, you know? So yeah, this second year racing the Mint, uh, we raced as a team. I think we're one of the few teams that did the race, um, on a Harley anyways. Um, and we raced in a foundation called the Warrior Belt Foundation. So it was, it was pretty fun. Most of the guys got to ride. Uh, we finished one lap. It was, it was a pretty brutal race, especially on a Harley. I mean, it'd be hard on a dirt bike, but uh, it was particularly hard on a Harley. I forget who it was, maybe Mike Tyson said, everyone's got really good plans until you get punched in the face. And I feel like this Harley's kind of a punch in the face. Everyone, everyone knows what they're gonna do and they're all dirt bike riders and then they jump on this 500 pound machine and, and really quickly get punched in the face. So I like to watch them come in and, and, and talk about how it was and, and, uh, and just things like that. So. Um, the Mint in itself is one of my favorite races, and, and we do a lot of the different races down in Mexico and, and all around. Um, I like, the, there's kind of a, a nostalgia and, a, and, and a, an excitement around the Mint. I like the parade at the beginning and, and just the whole thing, honestly. The start, the dead start at the beginning is kind of fun. Um, 
the mint to me is just one of my favorites in you know downtown Vegas. You can't beat that. So it's it's just a lot of fun. It's kind of it's laid back until the race, and and there's a lot of camaraderie with everyone. Um, the guys, everyone's really helpful, and you know I like the pit areas. It's the whole race, honestly. It's just a fun race. The Harley again just kind of makes it interesting because it's so difficult uh, to race in those in that environment. For the most part it's unqualified like anybody can do it you know it's, you can't just show up at nascar with your 67 chevelle and get out on the line but when it comes to this and especially the hooligan enduro class it's pretty wide open for anybody this year i came into it like i just wanted to i wanted to make it all the way and not be dead like last year i was dead my bike was destroyed crashed 20 plus times this year i was like dude don't crash you know, save the bike, make it to the end, and, and it worked. Like, I only laid it down once, and uh, I had, I could go another loop probably. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a lot easier and smoother this year. I think uh, my favorite part of coming to the Mint for 2020 was just watching some of the younger dudes that are racing this class that haven't been exposed to desert racing in the past, watching them uh, have the epiphany. Having them, having them, watching them learn how hard it is and how underappreciated it is. You know, a lot of them are used to racing flat track, which is takes a tremendous amount of skill, but it's over fairly quick. And this is very much more a marathon than a sprint. And, um, you know, the desert doesn't care who you are, how much money you have, how hot your girlfriend is, you know, how much time you spend on your bike or how much money you spend on your truck the desert will always take you down. I think the main thing that I would say for the message, and I, I try to get this in the guys that raced this last one, I'm like, come in this serious if you want to, but not serious as like you need to win. You, you need to be serious enough to where you know it's gonna kick your ass. But just the main thing you should be focused on is like enjoying this crazy adventure you're gonna go on. It's gonna be an adventure. You're gonna get thrown in some bushes, you're gonna eat shit in some sand, and you're gonna go in a rock section, it's gonna suck, and like, just come in and have fun. That's the main thing. Focus on the fun, it doesn't matter what fucking place you get. It's not about winning, it's about surviving the Men 400. And that sounds like a bad thing, but it's also the most fun thing ever. And I try to portray that as like, we're not here to race, we're here to survive, especially on a Harley. Again, they're 450 pounds of fun, so. Earn it one mile at a time, and I guess one pound at a time. <laughs> Back up front at Chokers, it was Shirey and Camo, one and two, followed by Roberts in third. Wasson and Simpson were behind them in fourth and fifth. The order remained unchanged heading into the Fox Proving Grounds. Dalton skipped through first. He had led for over 100 miles straight. Then it was second place David Camo, who had put a mile on Zane Roberts. The leaders passed race mile 30 minutes later and worked through the moto-style quarry. If David or Zane hoped to make a pass on Dalton, they were starting to run out of time. Shirey was on a mission and he looked unstoppable. Dalton screamed towards the dry lake bed called Rockets. In 2019, he racked up five top five finishes in seven hare and hound races. Adding the mid 400 to his list of accomplishments was now within reach. But David Camo wasn't giving up just yet. With years of racing under his belt, he was picking smart lines and letting the bike do most of the work. Dalton passed Arnie Wells a few miles later, who was still on his first lap, a testament to how fast he was moving compared to the rest of the field. Arnie was in second place in the Team Hooligan Enduro class and was determined to finish this year. Meanwhile, Dalton was full throttle. David Camo was right behind him, trying to reel him in still. Dennis Green from El Cajon, California, hit the proving grounds, leading the Open End division. Then minutes later, it was Chris Saw and Clayton Richard who came through in second and third behind Dennis. Dalton Shirey hit Rockets for the second and final time, 
once again showcasing his speed and poise. David Camo came through next, outrunning an R-44 helicopter while chasing Dolphin. Meanwhile, back in the Hooligan Enduro class, Mikey Virus was having a challenging but rewarding race so far. He battled the field and the course early on, but was now at the proving grounds on his second lap riding his Harley Davidson and looking strong. Up ahead at Beer Bottle Pass, Dalton flew by and showed no signs of slowing down. He was now 12 miles from the finish line. David Camo came through next and was still pushing hard. It was gonna be tough to catch Dalton at this point, though. Zane Roberts was still in third and applying pressure to Camo as they headed down the home stretch. After more than three grueling hours and nearly 200 miles of off-road hell, Dalton Shirey flew across the finish line in first place on his Three Bros SRT Husqvarna. The 22-year-old from Costa Mesa put on an impressive performance finishing ahead of second place David Camel by just 40 seconds. Uh, it feels amazing, first time racing it. I'm glad I got it to pull off a W for this first time. The truck course is definitely really chewed up. Like, they, those trucks freaking mess stuff up. But when we got off on our, like, the motorcycle sections and I can through the sand washes, man, it was so much fun. It was, I couldn't enjoy it anymore. In the Pro 250 class, Cole Knatzer from Napa, California took the win by about five minutes. And Tara Geiger held on to the Pro Women's win in the 86cc Open Division. Um, I mean, it has everything in it. Everywhere from like really fast dirt roads, as fast as your bike will go, to really technical rocky stuff, and throw in some sand washes and some deep sand whoops in there. And uh, I mean, it pretty much takes the best rider out here on the best machine to win this thing. Logan Freeman would end up on top of the box in the Team Open Expert class, and Dennis Green took home the win in the Open Am group. Jordan Graham bagged the Team Hooligan Open on his Ducati. The track was so much gnarlier than I expected. I, uh, I was looking at the map the other night, going, oh, it's a wash, oh, it's a power line run. The first lap, I was shocked. The whoops are four feet deep, brutal. I had a couple tank slappers here and there. And in the Hooligan Enduro class, it was Harley-Davidson rider Mikey Virus who was victorious. It was Mikey's second outing on a Harley at the mid-400. And in the dual sport division, James Hill took the win on his Honda out of Lake Elsinore, California. Here's a look at all of the winners for the 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 motorcycle race. The spirit of off-road racing and never quit attitude are what sustain the sport and make it special. Just finishing the Mint is an incredible accomplishment, and this year was by far one of the most difficult on record. Of the 500 plus race teams that left the start line, only 47% finished the grueling marathon. Also out on the course, keeping a watchful eye on the race teams was a legion of volunteer course workers and the safety professionals at Motorsports Safety Solutions. A special thanks to all who volunteered their time marshalling and operating the race this year. The Great American Off-Road Race will return to Las Vegas March 3rd through 7th in 2021. Visit themint400.com or facebook.com slash themint400 for complete details.